here at the Dunellen Airport, and I stumbled across a discovery that I didn't expect to find. It is an airplane that I know, but not from a place I remember. So I'm Dan Johnson, and I'm talking to Nick and Charlotte here about what am I talking about? <laughs> this is the Chipper 2. The Chipper 2 from Be Light. From Be Light Enterprise, okay, correct. James so Weeby designed it. What's it doing here? Uh, James, I think, uh, has just gotten to a point in his life that he's just got too many projects going on. He's got, you know, Great. children, he's got grandkids, he's got a lot of stuff going on. I think he just decided it was time to part ways. And uh, when I told my wife I found a, a kid airplane that I wanted to get, um, James said he was selling all of the manufacturing rights. And so he thought that, well, why don't, I mean, we thought it was such a good design. Let's see if we could just buy it all and make one for ourselves and then be able to put it back on the market. I know a lot of people really was sad to see uh, the Chipper 2 kind of disappear after some stuff that happened in James' life. And uh, we just like to bring that back out so people yeah. will have that opportunity. Poor guy suffered a fire, good heavens, yeah. <laughs> which really set him back. And then things probably got difficult. But yeah, it sounds a little bit like a story I know about a guy who bought a razor company because he said, I liked it so much, I bought the whole company. <laughs> so he went out to buy an airplane. And you bought an airplane company. Yeah, it's true. And you encouraged this, I'm told. I did encourage it. <laughs> um, Nick has such a passion for aviation. It's been in his family. When he was a kid, he would get uh, flight lessons in return for good grades until he got too Is many that right? <laughs> he got too many good grades. It got a little too expensive. I love it. Um, but his dad was a pilot. He even took his mom on a flight for their first date. Is so that it right? Goes away wow. Um, his dad was a pilot. He later became a Black Hawk pilot in the Army. Okay. And Chris's brother, sorry, Nick's brother, Chris, is now a captain for Allegiant as oh. well. So lots of history in aviation wow. in the family. Um, he has over 400 jumps skydiving. He is a mechanic. So he always says if he can jump out of it, fly out of it, or fix it, he's in. So, <laughs> um, but his passion for this, and, and honestly, I can say, you know, he probably wouldn't be doing this with me, and I would not be doing it without him. So you are a match set in this yes, case. Yes, huh? I've got all the business background. I taught business strategy and marketing for the University of Colorado. Nice. I've got my MBA, master's in marketing. I've been in business uh, intelligence strategy and consulting for, um, gosh, as long as I can remember now. Must be at least 10 um, or 12 years. Yeah. Because you're too young to have any more time I than know, that. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Twisted a little bit here. But, but. <laughs> I mean, it allows me to kind of have that entrepreneurship that I really enjoy. Um, one of my first jobs was actually helping start a television network, Altitude Sports, for the Avalanche and Nuggets. Um, I was the first employee and helped build that from the ground oh, up. Oh, wow. Um, and so I know what it takes to start up a business and, and kind of keep things going. So between that, my consulting, I was like, hey, if, if you know, you think, you know, and the plane, it just is a good, solid airplane. Um, so well, also, too, you love to go travel. And I kind of I kind of reeled around. I was like, but if we have this and we're living in Florida, we could hop down to the Keys of the Bahamas. She's like, you bet. All right, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> that was the sell job. Huh? I think that was the, <laughs> the mold. Floats is right up there. <laughs> oh, I do see it right above our heads here. Yep. So eventually I'll be like, oh, I need a break. I want to go down to the Keys for lunch. <laughs> yeah, right. It's <laughs> a lovely thing to do. I flew down there once with some friends. It's a wonderful experience. I hope you get that. Fantastic. Yes. Now, you got a little bit of background about uh, falling over and doing things that we just should touch on because a lot <laughs> of people have enjoyed. I don't know if it was particularly your act because there were several different ones, but tell us what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. About uh, so before I was involved with aviation, not from just family, but as a professional career, I was an acrobat with Cirque du Soleil for 20 years. 20 years? Yeah, 20 <laughs> years. Uh, then at 35, I kind of decided there's no such thing as an 80-year-old or 90-year-old acrobat. I should probably find some other kind of yeah. career I want to do. And uh, when I had the opportunity to get my uh, light sport repair mechanic certificate, ah. I fell in love with just even more so with aviation. I love jumping out of airplanes and flying them, like getting to work on the engines and see how it's all put together. I, I feel like I almost have more passion for aviation than I did acrobatics. I was lucky enough to fall in that. I always kind of think of it as I was riding a wave for 20 years, and when that wave broke, I was like, all right, time for something new. But I really love just everything about aviation. So now, now my next thing is I gotta have the opportunity to go maybe up to Patty Wagstaff's and do some aerobatic training. Oh, she beautiful. doesn't want to do that, but I'm like, sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you can achieve that as well. Well, that's an illustrious background for both of you. <laughs> now you're gonna play with airplanes. So right? That's very yeah. cool. Yeah. So briefly here, tell me what your plans are. What do you what do you expect to do with now that you own this mm -hmm. is like the I think this is the Weeby one, is yes. it not? Yep. Yeah. So yeah, this is serial number two. So, so where are you gonna go with this now? 
Well, we got as much feedback as we could from James and asked him, if you were to do this over again, what would you do differently? Excellent point. Um, and so we're trying to incorporate all of that feedback from him. Um, we're also working on writing a new manual and companion videos to go with the manuals because we want to make this build as easy as possible yeah. for people. Um, we're also looking at some changes in the kits themselves that would reduce the build time. So uh, just one example of that is pre-drilling the holes mm -hmm. so that the builder doesn't have to do that. Um, among other things, we also have a few other projects that we're working on, little features and additions that we're not going to let that cat out of the bag quite yet. <laughs> That's okay. Because that we're going to have a great i got to do thing. another video someday. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So we're, we're really excited about those. Um, so when we do have our grand opening, um, we'll be letting everybody know what those new features are. Maybe we can um, bring Dan down for a grand opening. Beautiful. We would love that. Um, what else are we working on? So we, I said the kits, um, reducing the build time. We are going to do a rebranding of the plane okay. because of all of these changes. Um, we want to differentiate, you know, the Chipper 2 from the new plane, or it's not a new plane, it's the same plane, just with some some alterations to make the building. Let's say it's the same heart, but yeah, you're going to exactly change the clothing. There we go, yeah, I exactly. like it. Exactly, that's a great way to put it. Um, so working on that, um, also um, we're considering um, switching from doing wet wings to fiberglass tanks just because the wet wings have seem to be challenging for a lot of people. Um, so, and Or just later on in the life of the plane having to deal with resealing the right. tanks and stuff. Um, fiberglass seems like a way to go. These wings here for this particular plane are the, the wet wings, um, but we are going to be recommending Oratex for the future. Uh, Oratex, okay. Yeah, yeah, um, for those that don't know, Oratex is a, uh, a fabric that you put on airplanes, but you don't have to paint it, mm -hmm. which is a big challenge for many people. Painting is kind of an art form, I think. Yeah. And plus, it adds a bunch of weight. People don't think about that, but it's, it's already got the UV several protection. pounds in it. Yeah. And so here you got this great fabric from Germany, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a great choice I think you're making. I think the way I tried to explain it to her is like, what I would like to do with this plane is almost make it a, like a beginner builder's plane. If you had someone, let's say, Bob the plumber who went to Oshkosh or Sun and Fun said, this is great and they're making good money and they can afford it, but they don't know anything about aviation. How do we make this simpler for individuals? Okay, you have a fuel tank, let's just give you a fiberglass one. Let's not dive into all of the other stuff from composites and everything. Like, let's just try to make this simple for you now. If you like all of this and want to do more, we can lead you down the road to a long easy or something else that's far more challenging, but let's just try to make this as simple as we can, you know, for just, anyone coming into it. Well, and also if somebody purchases this kit, we don't want to call them up 12 years from now and see how their progress is going. <laughs> we want to know that they've been out there enjoying the plane for many, many years at that point. Um, and, you know, we're also working on supplier relationships for some of those composite um, parts. Some of the, There's a few things that we can't produce. We need a five axis CNC machine. Um, the fiberglass, mm. we, will, we will be outsourcing. So we're currently working with identifying the appropriate suppliers uh, for that. And that's actually going to be a big determinant of when our grand opening ends up being, is what sure. the, who those suppliers end up being and what those lead times are for those components. Well, the good news is you're here in Florida where there is a lot of those kind. They're not all here in Florida, of mm -hmm. course, by a long shot, but there are many of them here and lots of people with knowledge here. Yep. So you can draw on a great deal of that from this area. That's so that's great. great. Well, uh, we, we don't want to tease it too far because you got a little ways to go yet, yeah. but I wanted to introduce the fact that you now are saving this thing. And i got to say this, that so many people I've interviewed in aviation are full of passion. They have lots of skills. They have lots of knowledge. They usually lack business acumen. Mm. So the fact that you're stepping in here and filling that role and you do what your part is, I think that should make for a harmonious deal and is lacking in too many companies that otherwise have great products that people don't ever find out about. That's my hope. What a shame. Yeah, and I've got a very strong marketing background, so my hope is is that this will resonate with the marketplace a little bit differently than other kit airplanes that people will see, you know, and we hope to keep the price uh, Affordable. Actually, I don't want to say affordable. I want to say economical. Afford We're not trying to make a cheap airplane. We're trying to make a, an economical airplane where you're getting a really good value. You've got something that's safe to fly, something that you can build in a, you know, in a, in a nice short build time, not, not, you know, something that's more reasonable than some of these 10, you know, I just hear so many stories about people, well, I've been working on this for 10 years, you know. We don't want that Hope to Hope they happen. liked all that time. Uh, right, <laughs> yeah, right. right. And many do, but yeah, still. Yeah, I mean, it can, we, and we want it to be an enjoyable process, not a frustrating process. So we're really putting a lot of effort into that manual 
to really make sure that people are enjoying the whole entire process of building Beautiful. as well as life. Like the beginner's kit build. Yeah. If you want to build a plane for the first time, I hope we can make it simple for you. And if you like these things, we can open up a whole new world of much more complicated stuff if you really want to tackle it. <laughs> There's always room to complicate yeah, Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's a marvelous thing, Nick and Charlotte. Tell me wh where we're going to find you on the web. You said you're not up yet, but by the yes. time we get this out, I trust we will be. So where is that place? Yep. So we are Skykicker Aviation, and our URL is www.skykickeraviation.com. Beautiful. Wonderful. Well, thanks for talking to us here at Donnell, Donnell and Airport in uh, eh, north central Florida, I guess I'll call it. Kind of closer to the Gulf Coast than where I live on the Atlantic Coast. But glad to come over here today and meet you folks. Wishing you all the best of luck with this. And I'll bet you there's going to be a bunch of people because I know James attracted a lot of interest with this when he had it. Mm -hmm. And then he had that darn fire. So ah, right. Such a shame for him. I'm sorry for that. But I'm glad to see it back We're in action. We're going to carry on that legacy. rising from the ashes. <laughs> all right. Very good. Thanks for coming out Thank today. Thank you so much, Dan. You bet.